It's Madden NFL 23, where we'll see a brawl inside the NFC North. It's the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. All that and more coming up next on EA Sports. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Today, it's a black and blue matchup in the NFC North between the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gaughton, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People have to mount them. Joseph now ready to get this one started, and we are underway from Minneapolis. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. And here comes the winner of the last two NFL MVP awards, Aaron Rodgers, as he brings his Packers out for their first series of the game. Even as he nears age 40, Aaron Rodgers' game isn't taking a single backward step. He became only the fourth player to win back-to-back -back MVP awards and led Green Bay to its third straight 13-win season. He avoids turnovers better than anyone in football, the quarterback position, and Green Bay, they are always a front runner with him under center. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four on second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feel pretty good about your next couple of calls. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. They fake the give. Now Rodgers. He's going to look deep for Watkins. And got his man complete. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Even later into his career now, there aren't too many guys that can launch it downfield with accuracy better than Aaron Rodgers. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. You're trying to get off the field and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary and you give up a big one. And you get a look at the final readout on air distance according to Next Gen Stats. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Rodgers' throw is taken, and I think the ball's out, and the Vikings pick up the football. We know turnover margin always key, going to be really key in this one, and to force an opening drive turnover, that's huge. It is, and you know something? There's one coach on every team that weighs in at the worst possible time, right? And this is bad. He just fumbled the football. Can't you just hear him right now? Son, you messed it up for everyone on that one. Messed up our offense, and now you put our defense in a bad spot. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 13. They start the drive with Cook. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. 
taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. Nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble, and a nice job seat. He got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team game over personal protection. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy set the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. They run again on first down, Cook, and he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. This a second and seven from the 37. On second and seven, Cousins. Flush to his right. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. That's multiple times now. He's tagged them with a big gain with his legs. Really showing off some nice awareness and the ability to correctly realize when he's got a chance to tuck it and go himself. on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Justin Jefferson, 48 yards. And the Vikings post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Well, he's been doing this for a lot of years, and the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And we knew that this offense was going to try and put pressure on the secondary. That was something they talked about with us. They knew that they had an advantage. Pressed it, and there you go. Big play for a touchdown on their very first possession. And that wound up traveling at even 58 yards in the air, according to Next Gen stats. Joseph connects on the extra point, and it's now a 7 0 game. So that run takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Amari Rodgers to return it from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. Last time out, remember they fumbled the football. That led to the touchdown. And Charles, they were in the red zone, so that's a backbreaker. they got to try to pick up the pieces here on this drive. Yeah, and I actually started to do the math here, so be patient with me. 12-point swing is the way I calculate it because not only did they drop the ball in the red zone, they watched the opponent score a touchdown right after that. So their goal is have a drive here and try and get some of those points back. From the 27, Rodgers setting up the screen, and he loses the football a second time. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Okay, after those first two drives, I think there's a head coach who's going to be called for CSI. They're going to run some forensics on this. What is going on with this ball club? Unable to hold on to the football and take care of it. They have two straight fumbles for them to start out. Yeah, you would think that this team would come in ready to go. Sometimes just mentally not prepared, and it shows up in these types of plays. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll try the middle with Cook. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
Second quarter action, 156 remaining. Now after the fumble recovery, it's Rodgers. He sets up the screen to Jones. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And his throw here is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. Able to find Lazard. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 21. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Rodgers again now. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. And when you're throwing the ball downfield really well like they have been on this drive, it's really a nice time to work one of the screen plays in. One of my favorite play callers in the game has always told me he starts every game with 10 to 12 screens because if he starts feeling the pressure from the defense, he uses their aggressiveness against them. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Now Rodgers. Flushed out right. And he'll just throw this one over in the way of the security crew. Incomplete here. A line of scrimmage once again, the five as they get ready for second and goal. From the gun, it's Rodgers. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Robert Tunyon, a five-yard touchdown. And the Packers are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. Well, that's just how they drew it up, C.D. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, yeah, I give him credit, found the perfect play call. The quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point up and good by Crosby, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And they've got a little under 40 seconds to go if they want to try to put something together here. Cousins now to throw on first down. 
And he's got this to Jefferson. And he's taken down right at the 45 yard line. They got 29 yards at time. One of the selling points of the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver. And almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. be the last play of the first half. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. Boy, Brandon, a missed opportunity there at the end of this first half. You'd love to give your guys the lead going into the break, but this effort doesn't find the mark, and that's going to keep things all square. A final shot before half for Rodgers. A throw complete to the tight end, Tunyon. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, seven, seven, our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. First up, though, a look at the next-gen stats for the Packers in that first half. And they were able to have some success throwing the football against the secondary. Look for that to continue as they try to break this deadlock. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, we get a look at their numbers on the ground in that first half as they'll be looking to rev things up here in a tie ball game. Final adjustments being made in the locker rooms. We're just about ready for the second half from Minneapolis. And for the call, let's rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Second down, they go right back to Cook. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. That one goes for 24 yards. With the kind of game he's had so far, he had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now Cook running right. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. 44 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, 
it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. They run it again with Cook. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Cook is not going to get a whole lot, maybe a yard down to the three. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Off the play fake, Cousins. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Johnny Mudd from three yards out. And the Vikings have broken our tie and have taken a fourth quarter lead. This is why a lot of play callers love play action in this spot. You just want to freeze the linebackers just for a second. Then you got a chance to get a quick pass into your tight end right behind them for a touchdown. Joseph on for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. And now, after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs. In this case, the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. Yeah, great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And oh my goodness, he loses it again. And the Vikings pick up the football. And that's a third fumble for him now in this ball game. And you know the old saying, CD, once is a fluke, twice a coincidence, three times becoming a pattern. Three times is a problem in this case because We've seen field goal kickers have days like this, quarterbacks occasionally. But how rare is it for us to see a running back lose it three times trying to carry it? Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and ten. Just shy of midfield at the 49. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. 77 yards rushing now for Cook, and this is a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with, and throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. 
That good for 19 and a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point in the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Here's Cook again. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Up the middle, it's Cook. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Delvin Cook taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Vikings have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. What a huge touchdown that was, obviously, here in the late stages of the fourth quarter as they try to put this one away. And, Brandon, when they watch the film after this week, they'll be very proud of every rep if they close this game out. Just a few snaps remaining. They can't relax just yet. Joseph now to have the PAT. It's good, and it is now 21-7. So that drive spanned five plays, and it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. So Aaron Rodgers and his offense. Down by two touchdowns, a minute 50 to play. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. He finds Randall Cobb with a completion. The clock rolls as the Packers look to hurry things up. Meanwhile, Rodgers throw into the hands of Cobb. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Shotgun now for Rodgers. It's complete. Lazard. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it'll be second down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. Working from the gun, Rodgers. Wide open is Watkins, he's got it. And he takes this one into the end zone, and all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. Crosby connects on the extra point, and now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So a little under 50 seconds to go. Plenty of time if they can get this onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camera on this one. And that's why you have your hand team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it, it was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics will tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. Cook up the gun. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Again, it's Cook. Powers through it. 
And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And off comes to Cook. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball and continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If he's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang out to the football and keep the clock ticking. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. This to perhaps salt this one away. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motor.